the chart has been confined within a large range for almost a decade. The main bearish reversal is from a small but strict double top, in alignment with a later downswing to create a less strict and more spread out triple top. There is even a minor bullish retracement spiking back up in September at the pattern's lower boundary, but it was of little consequence as the overwhelmingly bearish and volatile phase progressed quickly. An inverse head and shoulders reverses the swift drop, but would have been difficult to spot in late 2008 or even early 2009 for most. That is because, similar to other examples, this less intuitive pattern was in a variation where the neckline was slanted and there were multiple upswings for each shoulder portion. Interestingly, the residual influence of the slanted neckline area coincides with a strict double bottom. It begins reversing a minor downswing and develops an overall ascending triangle outline. At the same time, the larger bullish reversal starting from the inverse head and shoulders, developed into a full-scale uptrend. Further into 2009, all swing points and breakouts are clear and present moderate but adequate volume spikes within all the patterns, presented on this IBM chart since October 2008. The strong uptrend line from the double bottom is naturally unsustainable and led to neutral to bearish price action in the short term after being breached. However, since no major downtrend developed, it demonstrates another case where the large uptrend is merely in a resting phase prior to a bullish continuation. Price action is neatly contained within defined resistance and support boundaries well into July. This is when it becomes even more clear the uptrend line is highly valid. It encompasses the inverse head and shoulders low and the double bottom. So it is very normal to see strong support progressing the uptrend. When IBM drops back to the 99 area and the intersecting trend line in July. As would be expected, there is a tendency towards bearish to neutral price action after the uptrend line is breached, especially at the old triple top range. This flat range is volatile at times and sees a gradual decline in bearish volume. Bearish price action also decreases as the moderate 123.50 area keeps producing clear upswings. A bullish continuation would not be unusual if bullish spikes similar to the past two days continue to form consecutive closes over 130. It was indeed a strong bullish break to surpass the long-term resistance and wide range to end 2010 on a bullish note. An approximate long-term uptrend line marks the approximate trajectory as IBM reached for new highs. More recently, there have been some noteworthy downswings around the 210 area. Similar to the start of this example, there is a less strict triple top that comprises a strict double top aligning with the approximate range of a single downswing point. Other patterns include the gap down that brought the current bearish acceleration. There is also the rough outline of head and shoulders price action, with an inclined neckline comprised of a small left shoulder, compared to the disproportionately high right shoulder, that is still slightly lower than the second downswing forming the head. The long-term price action and the 210 area see a neat containment of price action along with the residual influence of the long-term uptrend line that is breached under increasingly bearish conditions towards 2013. When IBM begins to recover, there is a great example of a gap downfill within an uptrend. Although the 190 to 188 range was highly valid support and the price action in the short term was neutral to bullish, the broader context of an established downtrend also had to be taken into account, along with the near absence of significant bullish volume into May. Interestingly, the gap downfill formed part of the right shoulder in a fairly strict head and shoulders outline that saw the old 190 to 188 range form the neckline range. 
The 198 to 195 range also increases in volatility as major resistance with clear downswings form in it later in 2014. This range was also already highly influential. It was the site of clear downswings before the head and shoulders, and even the site of a major gap down around April 2013. The old 130 to 118 range is very precise, as many closing and opening prices form close to its boundaries to outline a double bottom that is likely to complete and reverse the downtrend. A solid bullish reversal develops from the near-perfect double bottom. The upper boundary could have been more precisely defined by using the minor downswing around 127 from early February, but using the old triple top range was more than adequate. Gaps at the start and completion of the pattern also widen the range to have the upper boundary extend up to 130, rather than just around 127. Although there have been some sharp downswings, a mainly horizontal range has developed. There could be a return back to previous highs if there is an influx of bullish price action and volume to establish above the small gap down and the upper boundary of this range. Bullish volume is generally weak but consistent to produce a less spectacular bullish continuation that quickly begins to slow down. However, the overall uptrend continues, as the old 150 to 140 range provided strong support potential to the downtrend lasting into October 2016. The 150s and 140s are in the spotlight again, after completing a compact triple top. That was part of an unusual head and shoulders outline. It presented flatter sloping price action for a more gradual slide prior to the gap downs. As expected, there is contentious trading forming a mainly horizontal range upon returning back to the 140s and 150s. However, that is in a more bearish and more volatile context, with the regular gaps and bearish spikes. The higher peak in early 2018 does constitute the head of a potential head and shoulders, with a neckline clearly defined by the gap up fill around the mid-140s. Interestingly, 2018 saw the head and shoulders complete with a fairly symmetrical outline, but a right shoulder that formed a small double top as part of the bearish continuation to eventually breach the neckline. IBM fell into wide horizontal ranges like before. These, along with gaps and sharp downswings, fell under the influence of ranges from previous long-term patterns. 